So let's take a look at specific or adaptive uh, defenses, and this is uh, also known as immunity. So this is a resistance to a particular pathogen or its byproducts. So where those other things were, you know, if any type of pathogen got in us, we would do those responses. Uh, we are going to make uh, specific lymphocytes here for a particular pathogen, all right? So if West Nile gets into you, the West Nile virus, uh, you're gonna develop an immunity to that West Nile virus. That's not gonna help you against Zika or coronavirus, all right? You have to develop that immune response all over again. This is essentially our third line of defense. Uh, so it's not necessarily that we wait for other things to occur. So all these things will occur at the same time, that first, second, and third line of defense. When we look at types of immunity, we have humoral, or also known as antibody-mediated immunity. This is immunity that um, is by antibodies that travel through fluids. So the fluids are blood, intestinal fluid, and lymph. Uh, and the antibodies are produced by B lymphocytes. And so the main things that we're getting here is we attack bacteria, bacterial toxins, and also free viruses. Next is cellular or cell-mediated immunity. This is immunity by uh, the lymphocytes themselves. Uh, and so what we're talking about here is T lymphocytes, and these are gonna attack mainly cells. So they're gonna attack infected cell, virus-infected cells, parasite-infected cells, cancer cells, and also foreign cells, all right? And so what they go after is what is known as an antigen, okay? So an antigen is a substance that simulates cells to produce an immune response. If you break down what antigen is, it's an antibody generating molecule, okay? So if we look at types of antigens, we have foreign antigens. These are not produced by the body, but from outside of it. Uh, so these are components of microorganisms or viruses. Uh, some of these can cause an allergic reaction. An allergic reaction really is an overreaction of the immune system. Uh, it's usually caused by a harmless antigen, like you know, uh, peanuts or something like that. Next are self-antigens. Self-antigens, these are molecules that the body uh, produces to stimulate an adaptive immune response. So these can show up on tumor cells. Um, so like, you know, if a cell turns cancerous, you can put up one of these things, which is basically a come kill me sign, and our white blood cells will oblige. Um, so uh, they can also activate though, unfortunately, in autoimmune disease. The, so here the self antigens stimulate unwanted tissue damage. So basically what's happening here is your white blood cells think uh, normal tissue that you have uh, is foreign and so they attack it. That's essentially what an autoimmune disease is. Looking at properties of antigens, uh, one is that uh, immunogenicity. So this is the ability to stimulate uh, the proliferation of specific lymphocytes and antibodies is immunogenicity. Uh, next is reactive. Uh, this is the ability to react with activated lymphocytes and antibodies. Uh, and lastly, they have uh, antigenic determinants, or also known as epitopes. And these are parts of the, antigenic, uh, of the antigen that are immunogenic. And so these are just kind of highlighting these things. This is the only region on the antigen that stimulates an immune response. So here, the antibodies or the lymphocytes are going to bind to these things. So whatever that particular part of that molecule is. So this is shown, you know, like, there we go, an antigen binding site right there. Okay. So next are major histocompatibility complex proteins, or MHC proteins. These are self-antigens. So these are antigens on our cell surfaces. They are strongly antigenic uh, to others, okay? And we have two different types here. So uh, this is shown these uh, here, the MHC class one molecule. So the MHC1, these are attached to viral antigens on our cell surface and they initiate our white blood cells uh, to kill the cell. So if this cell is infected with a, viral, uh, with a virus and it's causing uh, the production of more viruses. Now, if you wanna really know about this, go ahead and speed ahead into the next chapter where I talk about viruses and then I talk about how viruses use our cells to make more viruses, all right? So basically this cell is filling up with viruses. And so what this uh, MHC1, uh, thing is doing is saying, hey, come kill me, uh, and by uh, us killing that cell, um, it's going to reduce the amount of viruses, particles that are in our body. Next is MHC2 protein, uh, proteins. Uh, these are on antigen-presenting cells, or macrophages. So this is shown here, okay? 
So here, what's gonna happen in our immune response, I'm gonna talk about this real soon, but what happens here is our macrophage is gonna engulf an antigen and also the pathogen that's on it. So here's our foreign antigen, pathogen, we kill it, okay? And so one of the things that we do is we take that antigen, so that's really what, once again, keying our immune response is that antigen. What we do is we attach it to one of these MHC2 proteins and we attach it to our cell surface. Because so what this guy is gonna do, he's gonna encounter other white blood cells. And he's saying we're being attacked, here's my evidence for this, and not only that, here's my evidence that we're being attacked, this is a substance that we're gonna use uh, to fight off these pathogens. So uh, they present that antigen with that MH2 uh, on the cell surface. So as I said, they introduce that uh, to other white blood cells. And that MHC2 uh, protein uh, prevents that macrophage from being attacked itself. Because if it just presented that antigen, just only that antigen, it would be basically telling our other white blood cells that it's a foreign substance and they would kill it. So it packs in that MHC2 proteins. Now I do want to say, these MHC uh, proteins, both part one and part two, are highly antigenic to other people. So this is one of the uh, things that uh, makes uh, organ transplant hard.